Okay, what I did was logged into this uh, DSLreports.com and it's broadband DSLreports.com and I'm following these steps right here. And I do have this Action Tech MI424 WR Verizon wireless modem mocha modem and I have reset it to default and now I'm in here I noticed what I had to do first was go and change my wireless settings first uh, I, I selected the SSID and I picked channel 1 because my uh, default router from Verizon is uh, placed on channel 11 and in the notes it says pick a different channel so they don't interfere with each other so that's what I'm gonna do and I'm gonna set up my uh, WAP password next I just wanted to show you what I was doing here Okay, hopefully you can see this as I'm logged into my secondary Action Tech wireless router. And the instructions say to go to my network, network connections, and it says to go to select this network home office. What I'm going to do now says to click the settings button and it wants you to pick another IP address available to assign this secondary router and I picked 10 and I'm going to click apply and notice what I get here second time I've tried this that's why I did the uh, wireless router setting first because here's what I'm going to try I'm going to go back here I'm going to keep this setting 192.168.1.10 but what I'm going to do is disable the DHCP server capability So I've got it assigned my address dot ten at the end. I've disabled the DHCP server and I'm gonna click apply now. and we'll wait and see what happens here okay it looked like that worked after the reset I've got my new IP address 192.168.1.10 and my DHCP is disabled I had to do that at the same time to log back in and make this work properly so I'll continue to the next step the next step I believe we're gonna go uh, disable the uh, 
the coax so it's not the primary coax so we'll see how, how that goes stay tuned disable the coax as the primary connection on my secondary Verizon wireless router it says to go into my network which I'm here network connections I'll select that and then pick broadband connection uh, the coax one not the Ethernet the coax and we're gonna uh, it says right here disable the coax WAN interface so this is what we're gonna do next And we'll wait. I wanted to show you this page. <clears throat> There's my secondary Verizon Action Tech router, and uh, that's the address I signed it. After I did the disable of the coax broadband, it won't load. Uh, I'm assuming it's done, and I'm going to continue following these instructions here. And it should, you know, communicate with our primary router at this point. And I'm going to take you into my uh, living room and connect this to the TV and check out the wireless in there. And, uh, you know, we'll use the splitter like they recommend in the instructions and see what happens. Stay tuned. Okay, so basically. Here's the components I'm using. This is the secondary router I've uh, set up in advance. This is my television set. And this is the newest Verizon DVR unit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this out. And my camera connects to here. Now I'm going to unscrew this because it the cable comes into here and then goes out to my television through the HDMI cord. So I'm going to connect that cord to the splitter and then from the splitter I'm going to connect to here. And then the secondary splitter connection I'm going to connect to our secondary Verizon Action Tech router. We'll see how that goes. Okay, I just want to show you what I've done. Right there is my cable coming out, that black cable, the coax cable, is coming out here. That used to go into the back of my console, into the DVR from Verizon. And right now, currently, I have it going into a 1 gigahertz two-way splitter. And if you follow this coax up, it's going into the one and only coax connection into my secondary Action, action Tech router wireless. And what we'll do is I'm going to feed this other cord back through my unit console unit and I'm gonna feed that and screw that into the new Verizon DVR unit okay one last thing I want to do here I've got a cat5 network cable and I'm gonna plug this into 
one of our land ports any one of these four highlighted in yellow I'll just pick this first one here this uh, cat5 cable internet cable the other end I'll connect to the back of my television so that hopefully I'll have a clear connection, fast connection to the internet for Netflix, Voodoo movies, and other applications that stream over the internet. Not only that, with this secondary Verizon Action Tech that I bought, uh, will give me extended wireless because my primary one is located way down the office at the office way down at the end of this hallway in the front corner of the house so the wireless is kind of weak when you go out to the back patio but here's my primary location that's my primary Verizon Action Tech router so you see it's quite a distance and if I'm outside at the pool patio I notice the wireless is not as good reception it's only got like one or two bars so I'm going to show you afterwards how that works out back to my computer and I noticed after I have everything hooked up with the secondary Action Tech wireless router the address I assigned it was 192.168.1.10 and I'm able to log into it here now so I'm all logged in and I'm going to try to log into my primary router now. And now I'm in my primary router. And if I scroll down here, you'll see there's our secondary router. It's named a coax connection and it is active so we'll have to see how it goes from here I'm gonna check over a few other things and do some tests and see if the wireless is actually stronger out on my back patio now I'll show you the wireless strength when I get out there stay tuned I'm out here in the remote corner of my patio where I sometimes sit and you'll see my remote unit is getting a little bit better wireless reception than the base unit back in my front office. I'll give you a pan of where we're at here. We're out on the patio. There's my tablet. The remote unit which is the closest has a little bit better signal the one that starts with ZD off to the left that's a neighbor of mine so if you come in here I'll show you the remote unit is located right inside this door here right next to the TV And what I'm going to try to do next, it's got a mid-range antenna on it. I'm going to put an extended range antenna on this and see if there's any difference. And remember, my office where the primary Verizon Action Tech router was is way back here in the front corner of the home. And it's located right here. So... It's got that high gain antenna on it. And it does have a 
second antenna on this router. It's a newer Action Tech router. And it's got a second antenna right here, if you notice. There is an antenna right there. So I'm going to swap these antennas around and see what happens. Okay, I've swapped the antennas. I've got two mid-range wireless antennas on the base unit in my front corner office. And I've got a really tall extended antenna, wireless antenna, mounted on my remote unit that's right inside the door in my front family room. Here's the current readings as we get them. Here's the remote unit reading. Change this to the base. See how that adjusts. That drops down a bit. So there's a difference. We've got some good bars out here. I used to only get like one or two bars. And I am connected with this tablet here to my uh, remote unit currently. And there's our reading. So I added some distance. That's a fact. Not sure how much. But uh, I guess I do. I, I used to only have one to two bars and now I'm on three pushing four. So that's a good thing. Oh, look at that. 